Was there another question? No, no, yeah? no Okay. No, no. I mean, if, if somebody has a burning desire. Uh, <laughs> so our next uh, presentation is the overview of uh, phosphorite in black shale exploration. Uh, and it's uh, Lauri Yosu and Johannes Wind. Are, are you both? We will switch. You'll switch. Okay, go for it. So thank you. My name is uh, Lauri. I work in the Geological Survey of Estonia, and as already told with uh, Johannes, we give you a short overview uh, what exploration have we done in recent years regarding uh, phosphorite and black shale resources in Estonia. But before I start, I just want to say that after this really long COVID period, it's really nice to have these face-to-face meetings again. <laughs> so the outline... Uh, uh, of uh, our presentation is that I start with a short uh, overview of the aims of the project and timeline, then followed by a few words about geological background and uh, results of previous exploration. Then I give word to Johannes who tells us uh, and shows us really cool animation about 3D modeling and gives some uh, insight into that. And then comes uh, main results of our new drillings and finally, summary. So the aim of our study is to evaluate the economic potential of Estonian uh, phosphorite and black shale resources and prepare materials for follow-up studies. So a bit more detail, what we have been doing is uh, at first uh, digitalizing the historic data, uh, preparing a 3D model based on that data. We have done some new exploration drilling, and based on these geochemical uh, lab analyses, we have uh, trying to uh, validate the, the model based on historic data. We have also chosen uh, focus areas where we think that uh, it would be uh, best to concentrate the next studies. And in these uh, focus areas, there have been uh, done preliminary mining and beneficiation unit cost calculation and also uh, modeled the impact on uh, potential mining activities to the hydrogeological uh, yeah, background. So the timeline of the project. The survey started in 2018. The next year was mainly focused on getting our plans and uh, applying for permits. 2020 was the year where a lot of uh, drilling was done. Uh, 2021 was mainly chemical analysis, petrophysical analysis and uh, modeling. And all, all these years, the digitalization of historic data was kind of working on a background. And now we have a year that we plan to do a lot of uh, report writing, or we're already doing it. So in the Q3, we are planning to publish a report about the focus areas, the preliminary mining cost, and hydrogeology. And at the end of the year comes the more geologically focused report about the results of the new drilling activities and modeling. So, and now we are in the decision point how to move forward, but in general, the way should be to scoping stage, then pre-feasibility, feasibility, and if uh, everything seems bright, then investment decision and construction. So this was about the project, but now a few words about the geology. So this image you see here is actually made uh, close by in Tallinn when the art museum was under construction, but the similar geological horizons you can find also in the northeast Estonia where the main phosphorite deposits are. So the uh, phosphorite is at the lowermost part and it actually it's in the transition from Cambrian to Ordoetian. Uh, and this represents the transition from clastic sediments to carbonaceous sediments. The phosphorite is overlain here by the black shale that is uh, really thick in, uh, in Tallinn area, 
but in uh, northeast where the phosphorite phosphorite deposits are, the thickness of black shale is like 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Black shale is overlaid by clays, glauconitic sandstone, and then the limestone. And the thickness of limestone really depends uh, where the phosphorite deposit actually exactly locates. So the time of deposition, the Estonia was, or this area was part of the Baltic uh, continent, so we're we were located in the southern hemisphere around uh, 50s latitude. And following like about 500 years, we have transferred or shifted up here north. So now a few words about the historic exploration. The extensive exploration of phosphorite in northeast Estonia started uh, in 1950s and lasted until the late 1980s. And uh, during this period, a lot of work was uh, done, but uh, after that, there has been about 30 years of uh, standstill regarding systematic uh, exploration until the establishment of uh, geological survey. So during that time, thousands of drill holes uh, have been drilled and tens of thousands of samples have been analyzed. But unfortunately, only a small number of cores have been preserved, and even these preserved cores are really, really poor condition. But all these uh, results have been documented in uh, thick reports that are stored in geological archive. So we have access to all uh, geological description, geochemical analysis. Uh, a lot of uh, control anal analysis have been done to, to keep to make sure that uh, the quality of exploration was uh, high. So at the time, the, the main focus was definitely phosphorus. We have a little smaller amount of samples uh, associated uh, macrooxides that are important in uh, processing. And we have only a few analys analysis from the rear earth elements. Now the phosphorite deposits. So they are located in uh, Northeast Estonia. We have uh, three main deposits, Aseri, Tolse, and Rakvere. As you can see on this map, the, the highest grades are in the Rakvere deposit, where they can reach uh, values uh, like uh, sub 20% of phosphorus oxide. In Tolse area, the average grades are around 10% P2O5. Uh, in uh, Rakvere area, the layer is also thicker compared to Dolce. In Rakvere, we can say about uh, up to 8 to 10 meters. In Dolce area, we in generally 4, 3 meters. But on the other hand, the uh, overburden is much more shallower here. In the northern part, maybe 15 meters, reaching over 40, 50 meters south here. And in Rakvere, around 60 meters in the northern boundary, but going up to 100 meters here. And if we talk about the resources, then uh, calculated to pure P205, we have around 60 million tons in Tolsa deposit and 220 million tons uh, in Rakvere deposit. These values are estimated purely based on uh, historic exploration. Now a few words about the black shale. Black shale is uh, organic rich uh, sedimentary rock that has enriched values in vanadium, molybdenum, and uranium. Black shale covers this kind of white band in northern Estonia and reaches uh, basically from Narva to Hiuma. Uh, here on this map, you can see the distribution of uh, vanadium uh, concentrations. So the highest values or highest concentration is the same region that overlaps the uh, phosphorate uh, deposits. And if you remember, then the black shale interval is just above the phosphorite. Uh, similar trends you can also see uh, in uranium and molybdenum concentrations. But uh, the question is if the black shale is viable and economic byproduct or potential environmental hazard. There are two folds of uh, environmental questions uh, regarding to black shale. 
One thing is that uh, when deposited just on a heap, it can uh, self, well, the pyrite starts to oxidizing and this can lead to self-ignition uh, self because there is lots of uh, organic matter in this rock. Another comes from uranium concentration because it's relatively high uranium concentration. When we remove it from the ground, it's uh, considered as a naturally occurring radioactive material. So cautions must be made if uh, large volumes are moved that uh, people who are working with this material, that they would be safe. Now uh, about the size of the black shale resources. Uh, as I showed you, the black shale covers large part of the northern uh, shelf of Estonia, or this white band. But, but in, here, in this cha uh, chart, we have chosen the area that uh, overlaps with uh, Tolls, a phosphorite deposit. So in this area, it's uh, estimated to have a, around uh, 230 million tons of, uh, of ore and it contains around uh, 400,000 tons of vanadium oxide. What must be keep in mind is that uh, definitely not the entire deposit is mineable. The question is how big part of it uh, can be used. Now, if this val value compared to some uh, other deposits, then similar black shales, at least in a few years ago, was really actively studied in uh, Sweden, Scana which is, uh, let's say, similar in size, but, uh, well, about uh, twice as high concentration. We know that there is uh, one project from Australia, uh, which is like in really, well, intensive uh, development, but uh, concentrations there are even more higher, reaching 0.7, 8 0.8% of vanadium oxide in ore. And there are some two very big deposits in Sweden that are similar in grade, but, but huge regard in the sense of uh, tonnage. And now numbers for phosphorite. So here I selected two uh, mines or projects from Finland. If I get the numbers uh, incorrect, then please uh, correct me. Uh, so in Silinjär with ore is around uh, 4% and uh, pure P205 is estimated uh, around 9 uh, million tons. And Sockley, I found numbers that average values are around 11%. Pasi showed us that uh, uh, they can go like up to 30%. So maybe you can comment this one later. And the total uh, resource, 21 million tons of uh, uh, phosphate uh, oxide. So compared to these, our deposits are uh, bigger but uh, similar in, in grade, at least uh, compared to Sockley. But again, uh, the geological context is definitely different because we have uh, sedimentary phosphates. And also that uh, it, when comparing to Finnish projects, there are like uh, really defined areas where in the deposits in Estonia has uh, several land use conflicts and it's uh, question how big area or yeah, size uh, or pro percentage uh, we can uh, use of these deposits. So thank you for me, say, for me and now I give word to Johannes. Hello. So I, I will continue from here uh, in presenting uh, about the geological model of uh, mainly the, the two main uh, phosphorite deposits. So uh, the, the modeling has three main, uh, uh, three main aims. First of all, we, we want to be able to calculate resources in, in some given area that is not the same as, uh, that doesn't have the same shape as in the uh, historical uh, reporting. So we might want to make, uh, create some uh, new target areas and we want to query uh, the resources in, in some uh, new land area. So that's one purpose. Uh, second purpose is uh, that we are also giving input uh, for, the, for the mine design. Uh, 
so this is the background, the geological model for that, and also it, it's uh, the background for uh, hydrogeological modeling. Although the hydrogeological model has to be uh, much bigger than this one because those uh, impacts on the groundwater they uh, extend a lot more compared to to this area. So here is a small video. Uh, there are uh, 3,600 uh, drill holes uh, containing uh, chemical analysis of about uh, 15,000 analyses. In the middle there is uh, the Azeri fault and I have to say that this, this model is it's, uh, it's, uh, vertically uh, uh, increased uh, 40 times because otherwise we couldn't see the details. These are the two uh, ore bodies of phosphorite, uh, Tolse and Rakvere. And in Rakvere we have uh, also modeled sub-layers because there are some distinct layers in, in the phosphorite. So we have uh, distinguished uh, the high-grade layer, mid-grade uh, layer, as well as, uh, as the waste. And eventually we have created uh, a block model uh, for the resources and we can uh, query all the all the resource amounts in in any given area in inside these uh, two deposits uh, further on i will uh, tell a li little bit about the results of the of the recent uh, drilling or the exploration campaign we have drilled uh, 37 uh, drill holes not all of them were for our purposes we also uh, handed over some drill cores for, for Taltec, for uh, technology investigations. Uh, they go in depth until uh, more than 100 meters in Rakvere area. And in general, the, the area is, is uh, quite uh, wide. Uh, we haven't concentrated yet on any target area, uh, but we wanted to have an overview of, of the different deposits and uh, some drill holes that are uh, drilled outside of the deposit boundaries. Uh, their aim was uh, to have more insight about uh, uh, the spatial uh, attributes of, of black shale. So we have drilled also outside of uh, the boundaries of, of, of the deposits. So, uh, of course, uh, main things we have done, the geological descriptions, geochemical analysis. Uh, it was uh, really important that we, we were able to uh, uh, receive uh, um, drill cores with really good recoveries. Uh, engineering Bureau uh, Steiger was uh, drilling for us, so we, we got the recoveries of almost 100%, so we received really nice uh, drill cores, which is uh, very different from the historical uh, drilling. And uh, because of good recoveries, it, it was also practically the first time that we, will, uh, we were able to uh, make also some uh, uh, geotechnical uh, uh, analysis, mainly uh, the, the uniaxial compressive strength, which is important for, for mine design and, uh, and the modeling uh, of, of, the, um, uh, of the mine. So, uh, and the next, next an assignment has been uh, to analyze uh, spatially um, uh, all the different aspects, mainly of land use, compared to uh, ore quality. So this is uh, mainly like uh, geostatistical or geographical overview. And uh, we, we uh, uh, made this analysis uh, together with uh, really good geographers. And uh, they, they uh, thought about uh, or they proposed a method where we can uh, make uh, raster analysis to find the most uh, perspective uh, areas. Unfortunately, we will not present uh, these uh, new target areas yet because we, we will uh, soon uh, publish the report. Uh, but hopefully in the beginning of, uh, of summer, uh, we, were, we are able to also 
uh, show these uh, target areas because we, we cannot go exploring an, all this uh, huge uh, territory. We, we need some focus areas. Uh, next, uh, we also uh, uh, calculated uh, beneficiation unit costs uh, uh, in cooperation with uh, Taltec, as well as uh, um, as well as the hydrological uh, modeling uh, by uh, Maile in Geological Survey. And uh, we, we already focused uh, this modeling part in the, in the, in the target areas, not, not to uh, analyze like all the deposit areas. This was also already focused in some smaller areas. So the main uh, results, uh, I'm showing them in a really uh, condensed uh, way, because there are many. Uh, first, we compared the, the, the phosphorus uh, concentration between uh, between the historical results, meaning actually the modeled results and uh, and the new drillings, and in Rakvare we have some um, uh, higher uh, difference, uh, but we have only nine uh, drill cores in Rakvare, and if we remove one outlier, then uh, the difference is only four percent. So there is more like geological variation in uh, in Rakvere, and it's a little bit random where where the uh, drill hole happens to be drilled. So, but in in Tolse, uh, the the phosphorite layer is more predictable. The difference was all, all, all only uh, some two percent. Uh, next, uh, we we have to conclude that there is uh, not much. Uh, uh, perspectivity of, of uh, rare earth elements in, in Rakvere deposit. This is now confirmed uh, in the new drillings uh, from, uh, from bulk rock, as well as analyzing just uh, single uh, shells of uh, brachiopods. Uh, however, in, in Tols uh, there is some um, uh, increased uh, concentration of rare earth elements. In the, in the ore, it's about until 400 uh, ppm in average. And since we know that rare earth elements uh, occur in apatite structure, uh, then we assume that after beneficiation, uh, average concentration would be somewhere uh, above 1000 ppm. So there is some, some prospect, but it depends a lot on the technology, how to extract them and is it uh, economical. Uh, then we compared also dry bulk density of the phosphorite samples uh, because this is a very important property uh, when we calculate the resources and we, we have some concerns in uh, Rakvare deposit. We found the dry bulk density actually a lot lower than in the historical reports and we assume that it's, it, uh, it's because uh, uh, in the historical campaigns, it was not uh, possible to get uh, really good uh, uh, pieces of phosphorite. It was more like uh, sand. And uh, uh, we think that the actual density is lower, which means somewhat lower uh, numbers of resources. Uh, but uh, in Tolsa deposit, uh, the density is, is uh, very similar. And also we have compared uh, uh, the resource estimation and we, we get uh, very similar re results compared to the historical reporting. Uh, but again, difference comes uh, when we apply the new uh, information about the density of phosphorite. So probably in Rakvare the resource will uh, drop somewhat. Uh, and then we uh, uh, compared uh, like the depth or the position of the phosphorite seam and there is some more uh, variation in, in Rakvere, uh, a difference of 1.5 meters or so. In Tols, uh, again, uh, the phosphorite seam position is a li little bit better to be estimated and we get very, very similar results. And then, uh, since black shale doesn't occur in uh, Rakvere deposit area, uh, w uh, we say that, uh, we can say that 
vanadium average in tall that deposit, it's about 950 ppm on average. But this includes uh, like different lithologies because there is also carbonate inside and so on. And we, uh, when we compare, we are inside like 10% uh, difference, which is, uh, uh, yeah, we can conclude that actually the historical data and new data, they agree well. There is no big discrepancy actually. And uh, uh, next, there is uh, a little bit of uh, insight into the vanadium distribution in this uh, study area. Again, this is the Tolsa deposit. Here is the Azeri deposit. And uh, the uh, markers, as well as the colors, they show uh, average concentration of vanadium. And uh, we can outline the trends that uh, vanadium concentration increases towards south and towards east, uh, which means that in Tolsa area, the concentrations are a little bit lower. Um, the technology studies are a big subject that uh, we are doing together with our partners because in uh, geological survey we don't have the labs, uh, but uh, the preliminary tests have been performed with uh, the three different approaches. Uh, sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, as well as the hard process. In principle, they are uh, possible, uh, they are feasible, but we don't know the, the economic part of this. this. This has to be investigated more. Uh, then, uh, even if we can adapt uh, existing uh, technologies for uh, phosphorus acid uh, production, uh, then we can adapt the, the existing technologies, but for rare earth elements and vanadium, uh, this still has to be uh, developed. And uh, here on the photo, this is uh, uh, from, uh, from Rita project. Uh, it's uh, a bio-leaching uh, reactor of, of black shale. So this is one of the technologies that is being uh, developed. And uh, the next phase in from the from the RESTA project, we are expecting the results in, uh, in the beginning of next year. So we, we, we are also waiting what what uh, what we, we, we can learn from there. And to summarize and tell something uh, what is going to happen later, uh, so far, we have uh, re-evaluated phosphorite and uh, black shale uh, potential. We have digitalized a lot of uh, data. Uh, we have created uh, the models. And importantly, we have organized the data that so in, in a manner that they, it can be used very easily later. It's not anymore on uh, paper reports. Um, and uh, drilling campaigns uh, 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 have been focused more uh, on the associated resources. So uh, we, we talk, talked about uh, black shale, but also we have evaluated uh, uh, the, the geochemical composition of the uh, glauconitic sandstone because geologically we know already a lot about uh, phosphorite, but we need to know more about uh, the technologies and mining. So uh, the, the next report that we will publish uh, will uh, tell about uh, the new focus areas, uh, also about uh, beneficiation unit cost calculations and uh, hydrogeological modeling, which is really an uh, important aspect. And uh, the exploration report uh, will be published in the end of uh, this year. So two reports will be published quite soon. And we have uh, actually many, many uh, colleagues who have been working uh, with us and uh, we want to thank them all.
I think I'm a bit ahead of schedule, but we were given more time uh, <laughs> than initially uh, announced. So That just leaves us more time for people to ask questions. So uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> I'll ask the first question. Uh, so you're, you have looked at the phosphoric acid uh, way of uh, um, treating this material. There is a EU-funded project called Secrets, uh, which is being used on Appetite uh, with Yara in Norway, where they're using nitric acid, and they're able to successfully take out the rare earths out of, uh, precipitate the rare earths out of that uh, material there. So you might want to look that up as well. Um, questions from the room? Yes, back there. You have to wait for the mic. Is there, is there um, oil shale too? No, not only black shale, but um, oil shale, and can it be mined? Well, I, I, there is oil shale, of course. Uh, I can show one of the maps. Actually, uh, those drill holes uh, that were drilled in the far, far side, uh, far east side of the Rakvare deposit, they overlap with oil shale uh, deposits. I cannot say anything about the mining. I'm not the mining engineer. Like uh, we, we really have to ask this question from mining engineers. Uh, fr yeah, from the perspective of like saving the resources and be being economic, we should uh, use them both, obviously. But technically, I, I don't know what's the solution. How, how deep was the oil shell at those points? Uh, this is uh, something like, uh, what is it, 70 meters, Lauri? Yeah. Is, it, is it above or above? Above, above. 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 Okay, so yes. you kind of have to dig through it to get to the... Yeah, if you don't go undermine, underground. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, first there is oil shale and the phosphorite is at, at the higher depth. Okay, we have another question right here. Uh, thank you. Very, very nice presentation. Uh, I have a question. You have you made a calculation about this thicknesses, average PO2, O5 and resources. What was the lowest limit of P205 in your calculations? We know that uh, in Finland there is a 4% of pa 2 i but in your calculations, uh, what was the lowest limit? Lowest limit of detection or like a cutoff? You, you, you made a calculation of the resources, of yeah. average uh, content and everything. You should, uh, uh, you should make some limitation. Or you just uh, make average from the bottom of the uh, color. No. Yeah. Uh, so w we considered like the economic layer of phosphorite. So uh, there is like a natural cutoff of around 4%. P205, so 4% four, four it's a little bit different like uh, in Tolse it's, it's around 4 and in, uh, in Rakvare it's, uh, it's uh, 3% uh, where the sharp uh, change occurs so in the legislation uh, the limit is 4% it's a little bit varying in the natural conditions but basically, we were uh, we were considering uh, like the, the economic layer and not not the empty uh, sandstone. Uh, thank you. Uh, you compared the oldest old data and the new data. So yes. uh, this you should uh, uh, deal with them in the same way, uh, similar. Uh, we know that this uh, phosphorite, uh, to my mind, also in uh, mineral act, it's uh, six percent. For example, all the calculation mm -hmm. four. four, four, four. Ah, early it was six to my mind. And how do you compare the old data and new if there is a li different uh, PO two five uh, limit? I, I just a question. Yeah. Well, uh, we uh, first of all we uh, what we compare is. Uh, the prediction from model with uh, the actual new analysis. So in the model, uh, we made a query 
with exactly the same sample lengths and uh, inside the same like sub layers of phosphorite and this this is the way and we didn't uh, uh, use the waste rock in the calculation any other questions from the room up right in front of you Seattle thanks for the very very nice presentation uh, mining will evidently be the main one of the main issues here so do you think that the underground mining could be possible and what, what technique could be used? Do you want yeah. to comment, Lauri? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are both uh, like good guys to, to comment because neither of us is mining engineers, <laughs> but uh, underground mining uh, definitely would be uh, tricky because the, the main issue is the, well, roof stability because the unaxial compression strength values are rather ro low. Uh, there are th some uh, some ideas for underground mining, but there are still like huge question marks if uh, uh, if and how the stability is reached. I mean, if we take uh, optimistic scenario, then yes, but uh, we have uh, well very limited number of samples to say anything. We have uh, in in this study in the Tolls and Rakvere deposit all together we have around. 20, 30 samples from the phosphorite bearing unit. So to, to see if, uh, if uh, it, it's weak layer anyway, but in case it has like, let's say super weak interlayers or something like that, it might be uh, tricky or expensive. For sure, it, <laughs> it would be easier to start uh, from the north where we can uh, quarry phosphorite. Big area because the phosphorite seam is uh, thinner. We need big area. It's very visually disruptive. There are forests, uh, so yeah, it's it's a big uh, big topic to discuss all the land use, private lands, and so on. Other questions from the room? Last chance. Do you think that in situ type of leaching would be possible? I, I can only say like my <laughs> personal view. It hasn't been uh, really studied, but uh, just thinking about the, the hydrogeology in this deposit where actually uh, the st sandstone bearing the phosphorite, it is, it is uh, a water seam. So and uh, drinking water is also uh, taken from the same uh, geological unit, then it's really difficult to imagine any in situ mining unless you somehow like pump out uh, the phosphorite without uh, introducing any chemicals. But this is just speculation. All right. If I see no other hands going up, then uh, gentlemen, thank you very much.